We are Monetization 101. This is our next session uh, with Erez Neve. I did it as best as I could there. Um, and he's going to go through some successful strategies of monetization, um, most specific, specifically with uh, backgammon casino-like experience and uh, some of the best practices that he's learned and his business has learned throughout the process. Yeah. Yes? Thank you. Um, sorry for my voice. The part is just... Uh, so this is uh, not a presentation that summarizes uh, all the casual connect insights about monetization, and I would love it if someone did, would do that and send me a copy. But I only wish to share my personal experience specifically from working on our Bad Game on Live game as a game designer and producer in collaboration with the wonderful team at Mytopia that partnered with us on this game a few months ago uh, and contributed a lot for their uh, experience. So my name is Erez Nave. I'm the co-founder and VP product of Come to Play. Come to Play is a social game company. We are located in Israel. Uh, we take timeless games that have millions of fans and bring them into the social era. So a quick uh, introduction to the game we'll be discussing. Uh, Begem on Live was launched on December 2012. Uh, we currently host 250,000 250, DAUs with a 25% of DAU to MAU ratio. Uh, we manage two fan pages with uh, a total of one million fans. Uh, and another fact that I'm proud of is a uh, uh, 4.3 rating uh, from the users. Uh, so Begemon is a one-on-one -on -one skill board game. The player progresses in the game by leveling up and unlocking new location and play against players from all over the world and also play against his friends. So each board location has a different design, sound, and general atmosphere. Uh, the higher the player advances, the higher the minimum and maximum bets, and the player is matched against better, stronger players. Uh, we've introduced virtual items like dice, mascots, blessings, gifts, but they are used as a vanity and personalization item which do not affect the, the game outcome. We find them to be a really good tool for sale promotion and uh, virality, but our economy is based on virtual currency rather than those items. So our plan was to help a new user walk their way up to a specific location, level, support them up to a certain point, and level off the support and release them to their own luck and skill in the game. So the support was given in the welcome bonus, level up bonus, daily bonus, and even bonus for new users that lost all, all of their coins too fast. The amount of support and specific location and point in the curve that is right for the release was and still is tested. On the other hand, we needed a way to control the amount of sync, a way to take coins out of the system and to have a balance between how much we give and how much we take back. So in a multiplayer one-on-one -on -one game, it's harder to do and control than a single-player game. This is why we have a 5% rake for the winner in a form of a tip to the house, a double or nothing offer at the end of a match, and a high-low mini game that functions as a fixed odd game. So I focus on monetization effort, but I want to say that virality and monetization are two sides of the same coin. User acquisition costs a lot of money, as you all may know. And each user that the user brings is part of the user acquisition equation. So if a user does not want to pay, does not want to buy, the invite option should be provided as a good and welcome option right next by. So the first five months were devoted to optimizing the user experience and economy, support and release points, creating the need, the emotional roller coaster. This is the most important point I wish to emphasize. The base for all monetization effort is great content, as you may know, that invoke real strong emotion in the player. An engaged player that has the need to keep himself immersed in the game will agree to pay for prolonging the experience. We started with one buy panel with the fixed price points up to $200. We did offer some sale on a few holidays. In April, I've tested the change in the buy panel and changed the maximum amount to $400. So some veterans player were willing to buy the $400 option. Of course, new player would not buy the $400, but they do, however, buy the $200 option. So I realized offering the $400 option to all the users was a waste of screen real estate. Um, so this is when we decided to come up with the first segment, uh, segment offer 
for non-paying users and for whales and veteran users. So we now had two buy panels with different prices to support the need to buy low for a new player and to buy high for veteran whales. So when making the sale, we sometimes changed the amount we gave and sometimes lowered the price by 40 to 50 percent. We noticed that we are gaining more FTDs, more first-time users, depositors, uh, with the lower price points of $1.40. So it offers a, a question of how low can you go? Uh, if we'll add an even lower price point, will we be able to convert more players to payers? What lifetime value will they have in comparison to players who started purchasing in higher price points? So I'll answer uh, this in detail in a minute. Uh, on May, five months in, we've introduced the special sale, an offer with a 30-minute uh, limit that had 30-minute limit, yeah, that had the option to bundle virtual items with coins. So a quick note about proceed value, 5,000 coins with golden dice in comparison to 5,000 uh, uh, coins without golden dice uh, look more uh, perceived to be more valuable, but uh, the dice have no real uh, value in the game. They, they are only for show off and, and good luck, maybe. Uh, also, a time-limited offer has the scarcity element, which is important to promote a sale. So from the previous sale experience, we learned that we should segment the offer. So from the get-go, we build this uh, special sale system with the ability to segment a special uh, offer to a specific group of players based on average purchase, level, uh, level range, average uh, bet in the game, and even language. So we started uh, to experiment with small purchases for non-paying users. And indeed, the 50 cent and 30 cent offer converted more players to payers creating more FTDs. I can also share that there is an indifference between a 30 cent and 50 cent offer, so go for the 50 cent. Uh, of course, there is no real value in a 50 cent uh, purchase. But if you examine the group of players that purchased more than $50 in lifetime value, 25% of them started with a 50 cent offer. So Without the low starting point, they might not have been converted into pl paying players at all. So again, 25% of the users who purchased in a total of $50 started with a 50 cent offer. Uh, currently, we have eight uh, special sales running at the same time for eight user segments, each with its own offer uh, bundle and price points. We find that offering a user to start with a small purchase and then giving them slightly more expensive offers work best. We set some offer to be right on the money in the comfort zone of the user by his average uh, purchase, and some offers that are a bit higher in the next level to try and move his purchases up as he progresses in the game. So diversity. Here's an example on the left uh, of a week with a segmented special uh, sale with eight, eight price points, but all with the same offer. And on the right, the same price points for the same segments, but with a diversity in offer. So each uh, segment got a different bundle, different virtual item, and slightly different look, and got more than three times of revenue a day. So why? Uh, first, because once you see the same offer again and again and again, you become blind to it, like a banner. Uh, second, because if you like it, what would you do with so many items of the same kind? Third, because once you've, got, uh, you've made a purchase, you would expect to see something new, something fresh. Each time you buy, you want to see something new. So diversity is very important. Uh, segmentation. So due to the success of the special sale segmentation, we use the same method to the buy panel. So now we run with different packs of coins and coins with the virtual item bundle on five different segments. And each has a sale mode as well. There are two main goals to the buy panel segmentation. One is the right price point to the right type of players, mainly based on their average purchase. And the ability, second, the ability to raise the minimum and maximum offers based on the user uh, purchases, to increase their purchases as they progress in the game. Um, running a sale on any event possible, like Christmas, Cyber Monday, and such is a must. But other than that, we, find we chose not to uh, set a fixed time for a sale or tell in advance when the sale are turned on and off. We turn it on for a few hours a day, about uh, one to three hours a day and change the timing each day so players will not get used to buying only when there is a sale or postpone the purchase for a sale time. So we keep record also of all the sale 
timing and revenue generated from those sales in order to learn which sale worked best in a specific day and time. Of course, every piece of information you got is important, so keep it. Uh, at first, we didn't have uh, a sale indication that appeared uh, outside of the buy panel uh, at the top uh, demo. And now we have two animated buttons, a sale flag that go off <laughs> when there is a sale. Uh, the buy panel itself, uh, the UI changes a lot more in sale mode with extra sale data. We find it very important to make the player aware of the sale event to communicate that this is an event that he should examine and not ignore. Uh, when should you open the buy panel for the player? For him, not for him to click on it, for you to, sh to open it uh, for him. So I hate to admit it, but early on we had a bug that uh, had the buy panel pop up each time the user entered there. And accordingly, we sold more during, during that time. So we took it down to once a day, uh, and I think part of the reason it works is because the players uh, are exposed to the buy panel, and they know what we offer, how it looks like, and once they need it, they, they are not uh, afraid to click it anymore. It's already feel familiar and non-threatening to them. Uh, so it looks obvious that the best timing uh, to buy coins is when you are out of coins, down to zero. This is the time where we offer the uh, player to buy coins with price points that are segmented to his uh, personal history or invite his friends so that they will send him more free coins. We log the zero coins events in our analytics system and it's important KPI for us that we track. But zero coins events account for only 20% of all the purchases and revenue. 80% purchase coins even when they have millions of coins in their account or enough coins to be able to play another match of Begemon. So the reasons may be uh, because uh, of a current sale or a specific offer in the virtual uh, item bundle. But the main reasons are self-perception, my image of myself, my pride. I see myself as a good Begemon player that deserves to play with the big boys in the higher tables. And, then, and if I can't do that, I want to get back into the higher tables as, as soon as possible. And uh, also social status. Um, what others think of me. The leaderboard, the XP level, the coin balance, all become part of the social status in the, in the community because it's a community of players that play against each other. So uh, once I drop uh, below, I, I had one million coins, now I have half a million. What others will think of me now because it's part of my social status. Uh, so this is a drop table, we call it. Once a player that had X amount of coins experienced a drop below a certain threshold, there is a strong chance he will buy. We identify these drop events and offer the player to buy. So even when there are many coins in their balance, the player experiences this drop as if they just hit zero coins. It's the same feeling for them, even though they have 150 million coins in their account. So it's also a key metric for us to follow and analyze. For example, if I have only 1,000 coins, I need to uh, reach uh, close to zero, zero to, to have the feeling to, to go and buy. But if I have half a million coins, only 6% is lost and I have the same feeling. That, that's that's uh, what we analyze. Uh, we ex we've experimented with a special offer, which is part of the welcome bonus. So the player is offered to pay a small amount before they have even played one match. Sounds very strange, right? I was surprised by, by the result. It became an important tool for converting players to pairs. In this case, they weren't even uh, playing, so it's converting an install to payment. And again, the sum isn't the point. The 50 cent here isn't the point. It's the commitment you get from a player who purchase. And, and the wide, wider net you spread to cover more area. So more players, and in the end, more conversion and valuable players. So it's, again, the 50 cent will not make you rich. It's the conversion, it's the commitment you get from a player who purchased a 50, a 50 cent uh, 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 offer that will play longer, and will stay even longer, and will uh, have an easier uh, way to, to buy more. So summary. Um, Plan for optimization, make it easy for you to change game progression scenarios, bonus and sync points, price points, different designs, log and measure each change, of course. 
create great content <laughs> that engage the players and make them want to buy their way back into that experience. Display more, display more product, more diversity. Start with a small purchase. It may not be much at start, but it's convert to big numbers later. Try to sell as early as possible. You'll be surprised as I was. Uh, segment. Each player is unique, but five to eight segments will do the job. Uh, alternate offers and price points. Offer to buy in the user comfort zone and sometimes above it. Timing is everything. So learn when the player will most likely buy and make it easier for him to do so. Open the store for him. I'm open to questions. Any questions from anyone? Nice. <clears throat> on the buy panel, um, you were experimenting with uh, like the free gifts. Have you tried something like the decoy uh, f effect there? So having like um, two times the same pricing point, one with free gift and one without? Uh, it's the Dana Rielli. Yeah, uh, yeah. No. No, I, I love his books, but uh, I didn't uh, Yeah, yeah. There, I, I heard about uh, um, stuff that people are doing that uh, they make uh, bugs on purpose, like uh, take one uh, uh, of the um, price points and uh, give a lot more coins, even <laughs> it's a lower price point, in order to promote it. Uh, it's like an inheritance bug. Any other questions? Hi. Uh, what savings communication work best for you? Is it like get something free on top, uh, save uh, save five dollars, or save twenty percent? Um, I think that the w the one that was best for us is to keep the the price point the same. Well, it's not the same. It's eight segments. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's all already changes. But uh, keep them the same and give give more coins and give more uh, uh, free virtual items and not reduce the amount of money. So in order to reduce the amount of money, just have a segment that is right for the user. But was there a difference uh, in the communication to the user? I mean, uh, if the user, I mean, if you say uh, save two dollars, does it work better than uh, save 50%? That was more the oh, uh, communication yeah, well, uh, each user is unique, so uh, there is a system uh, like Biz and Pollen do that. They uh, they show uh, for some users uh, with percentage and some uh, with coins, and they know uh, which one works best for uh, each uh, user segment. So uh, you don't need to think about it and try to manipulate it. So on that same line, uh, what were you most surprised with in this environment of like an offer or a discount that uh, had the most uh, impact in the game? Is well, definitely the most impact was uh, the, the welcome bonus, which really surprised me because they didn't even play one match. And uh, it's a very small purchase, but uh, it accounts for about 40% of the FTDs a day. So it's... Uh, it's okay made a huge uh, difference. Great. Any other questions? All right, let's thank him. Thank you. Thank you.